every October, and the University of Tartu Sports Hall, an epic showdown goes down. Out of the hundreds of young Estonians aged 15 to 24 who fight their way through qualifier rounds, only the top 15 teams are selected to participate in the final competition, which is broadcast on live TV. Winning means fame, glory, and cybercation? I'm, of course, talking about the Cyber Battle of Estonia, the biggest ethical hacking competition in the Baltic states. To win this cyber security exercise, young computer enthusiasts must find a hidden string of code or capture the flag in an intentionally vulnerable system. So why is this such a big deal? The Baltics. What a lesser known region can tell us about the future of war. In 2007, Putin waged what is largely considered to be the first act of cyber warfare against Tallinn in retaliation for the city relocating a Soviet era monument. For 22 days, Russian hackers used distributed denial of service attacks on commercial and state websites by flooding the servers with junk traffic. At the peak of the attack, the Estonian government website, which normally received between 1,000 and 1,500 visits per day, received the same number of hits per second. Preventative measures put in place to deter future cyber attacks created Estonia's digital society that we know today. On April 4, 1949, the North Atlantic Treaty was signed to curb the spread of the former Soviet Union. An attack against one would be an attack against all. In 2008, NATO inaugurated the Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in Tallinn. That same year, member states gathered in Estonia's capital city for the flagship annual Cyber Coalition. Ranking among the world's largest cyber defense exercises, countries share a growing repository of prevention tactics against bad actors. Cyber Coalition also gives whistleblowers the opportunity to sound the alarm on emerging threats like spiking GPS jamming attacks in the Baltic Sea. But Estonia is not reverting to its analog past. In fact, it's pushing forward. In Estonia, every government service, from filing for a divorce to renewing your auto registration, can be done online. Long wait times at the DMV be damned. Another long line us Americans have waited in is at polling places. In Election Day 2012, the line to cast a ballot at my elementary school gym was so long, my Girl Scout troop made a killing selling cookies to voters. So, when I spent three months in Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia in 2024, I asked 12 citizens if they'd ever waited in a long poll line to vote. The answer was the same. But why? In addition to more accessible municipal polling place layout, Estonia has answered a question Americans have long been asking. Why can't I vote online? In 2023, for the first time since iVoting was introduced in 2005, over half of Estonians cast their ballot for the national parliamentary election online. To maximize security, citizens download software to bypass the browser and insert their ID into a USB reader. According to multiple sources, the process takes less than a minute. But despite widespread citizen acceptance, computer security experts have cast doubt on iVoting. In 2014, a team from the University of Michigan ran a simulation which demonstrated that Estonia's partial publishing of source code created system vulnerabilities, which bad actors could use to manipulate votes. However, Estonia continues to upload 
the majority of server source code to a GitHub repository today, highlighting the struggle between transparency and security. Estonia was dealt an unfair deck of cards. However, drawing the short straw made Estonia the e-democracy it is today. Will the country continue to keep pace with the Kremlin's increasing rate of aggression in cyberspace? Not only does Estonia spend 0.8 percentage points more on its military than Europe on average, but young Estonians are forging pathways in cyber defense careers. The future is in dexterous hands.